Okay, so welcome to Lua. This is th the first occurrence you're seeing of this language probably. And what's going on here is that we are in a program called Sight. And Sight is just a way for us to write code and for the computer to understand us. And this is a program that comes accompanied, bundled with the exe I've given you. And if you installed it, you probably have it on your computer as well. So the first thing we want to do here is launch interactive Lua. And if you don't see that, you can go to view and press output here and just make sure it's checkmarked or just press F8 as a shortcut. The first thing I'm going to do is zoom in, which is done by pressing control and scrolling in or out. And now, now we're bombing. So before we get to like maths operations that we can do, uh, I want to I want to give you a way where we can see the result of those operations and that's with a function called print. And a print is just a function, so this is the name of the function print and whatever you put in parentheses is going to output on the bottom of the screen. And this is just a, a, the most basic way for us to kind of know what's going on inside the program. So if, if you write print 109 for example, and if you try to output it and try to run the program, it's not possible yet. And that's because the site doesn't know that this is actually a Lua script yet. So what we need to do is go to file and save as, or press control shift as as a shortcut and save it just as a something. So name dot Lua. The important part here is the extension dot Lua and you can name your program, whatever you want. Okay. Now that we saved it, uh, we know that this is actually a program and that everything is fine. And we can see that it checks out because this button is actually now highlighted and we can actually click it. And if you run it, what happens is something very in uninspiring and it says 109 as a result. And that is exactly what we told it to do. We said output 109. Okay, so that's great, but that's not really that fun. So can we do more things like that? You know, this is about mathematical and logical operations. Sure we can. 50 plus four or three because I mistyped is 53. So, okay, this works, you know, math, math checks out and you can expect all the basic math operations to be in there. Of course, uh, 50 minus, minus 3 and you can also expect 50 divided by 3 and you can expect 50 multiplied by 3. You know, the basic four math operations that come in handy, you know, when you're doing whatever. Uh, another thing we can do here is comment and commenting is useful because it allows us to ignore lines. So, you know, if you just write a, pro a line maybe we don't like and maybe it's causing us problems, we can comment it without actually deleting it. And another use for comments is whenever we write maybe a complicated chunk of code that we're not exactly sure what it does, or maybe we know we will forget in like a year's time when we come back to the project, it's a good idea to just write a comment to watch what each line does. And that way we, we, we don't have to read the code, but we can just read the comment and know what, what it's all about. Okay, there are more mathematical operations that we can use. Something like 3 to the power of 3. And this symbol, you know, the 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 roof, I guess, whatever, um, is, a, is, a, is a way for us to tell the, the program that we want to do a power of something. And we can also do roots this way, you know, the mathematical explanation for roots is just three to the power of something that is smaller than one and bigger than zero. And in this case is if you want to do a square root of three, we, we write it as three to the power of 0 0.5. Or if you don't want to do that, we can three to the power of a half. Okay. So that's all great and dandy. And another uh, operation that is also pretty useful is called the modulo. And a modulo is just an operation that gives us the remainder after a division. So in this case, we say nine modulo four, and that gives us one. And that's maybe a bit weird until we break it down. So if we, if we divide four by nine, the four goes into nine twice, and we have one remaining. And you probably all did this in primary school. And the modulo is an operation that gives us the remainder. And that is useful in some cases. And hopefully, you know, as we progress, I'm going to show you a few examples of where we can use this. And that's going to give you an idea of just, you know, how expensive even the most basic operations can be. Another thing that we can do with a print function is print out uh, strings. Strings are just a bunch of characters together. So we can say hi and make our program very polite. It says hide. So that's great. Uh, but you might be wondering why are there quotation marks around it? Well, quotation marks or apostrophes both work are just a way of the program telling, uh, of us telling the program that it actually goes for a string. And this way the program is like, okay, 
marks. This means that this is a string. Output everything you see until the next mark. And I use quotation mark because it's easier. I don't think there's any difference in this language. In some languages there is, but in this one I don't think there's a difference. And this is just the way it does. So if you just said hi without the quotation marks, uh, Lua gets confused and is like, I don't know what to do here because I don't, know, I, I don't, I don't recognize this. This what, what's this, right? Um, and so yeah, if you want to output strings, just remember to put quotation marks around them. Another thing you can't do is uh, what also you can do if you put like. 5 plus 4 in quotation marks, it's just gonna output as 5 plus 4 because this for him isn't any a mathematical operation anymore, like in this situation. But what it is for now is just a string, you know, it doesn't matter what's inside, it's just gonna output it and it won't try to do any calculation or math. So that's something you you you, you kind of have to know when you're going forward. So another thing, okay, uh, this is the math operations we have, uh, the basic ones. Uh, there are of course more of them, you can write some of them, you know, things like that, but we're gonna get to them when they are actually important. But for now, just stick to this few basic, especially if you haven't seen things, it's probably just fun to see how things are printed out. Okay, so we have logical operations. If you don't know what logical operations are, there are like a ton of resources on the internet, but basically what we have in this language is and, or, and not. And uh, these are operations that are based on true or false statements. So for example, you saw that we have strings and you saw that we have numbers, but true or false values are only true or false and they can be any other value. So if you say something like print true or false, and if you know how the or operation works, or is basically an operation that always outputs true if at least one of the, his, its operands are true. So if both were false in this situation, we will get false. But if both were true, or one of them at least was true, we would get true. And these are not strings, remember, even though they they are they look like strings, and these are not numbers. These are just something that have a way of representing something that is true or something that is false. And that is useful sometimes, you know, maybe you you have a function that maybe checks if, uh, li like, if you have like a lot of enemies in the room, you want to check if any enemy of them is has more than 100 HP. And that function would return true or false. And, you know, that's very useful. So just remember that these are values that are totally, totally separate to uh, strings, which are, you know, just letters and characters, and they're not numbers. So that's what you have to remember. So another operation is end. And end is an operation that gives you false unless both of them are true. And that also comes in handy in some cases, and you can see if both are true, one of them is true, and if at least one of them is false, both are false. And another one that is useful is not, and not just inverts whatever you might, uh, not just inverts whatever you put in front of it. And obviously you can nest this in, in ways to kind of uh, make them a bit more complex, so you can do something like true or false, so that means that first of all, it's gonna value this expression and then it's gonna negate it with a not. Uh, so then it's gonna do some funky stuff. You don't have to think about it too much, but what is important that you can chain all of these things together to kind of make uh, an, an ultimate uh, an ultimate expression. And that is something we're gonna tackle three episodes down the road. With that said, these are the most basic things you kind of have to know. This is just our way of communicating with the program, some very basic operations and uh, with that said, you know, uh, that is all you have to know here. If maybe you want to learn more about binary things, you know, maybe you know that computers are comp compromised of binary things and you don't know binary and you want to learn that, I can make a separate video on that if, if you want to know. Uh, but otherwise, when we go into the next video that's going to be about variables and types, I'm going to go into more detail about what these numbers means and things like that. So I thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.